Sure. sure. Talk, talk to us a little bit, you know, Scott and, and Travis, a little bit about the Grupa de Maestro. Uh, for, for the customers that really don't understand or don't know about that, they've seen it on the Monte Cristo, et cetera, some of the releases. Talk to us a little bit about that. Hey, I live here in Miami. Are you saying that wrong? Oh, please correct me. Please. You've got to throw your Latin flair into it. Come on. Yeah. Grupo de Maestro. Yeah. Grupo, Grupo de Maestro. Yeah. Rick's from Ohio. Just kidding, so Just kidding Rick. <laughs> I, love, I love it. I love this. <laughs> Scott, you take this one. Well, um, the first time I got a chance to meet them, um, outside of the, the big trade show at that time called IPCPR was uh, on my very first trip to our Dominican Republic factory. And to your earlier point, Rick, um, you get a whole new appreciation. I know you and Cole have had the opportunity to visit some uh, factory tours as well. When you see firsthand how many people have touched our cigar from start to finish, and in most cases, making their 22, right? Uh, and most of the time, making their own boxes too. And then we just take it for granted when we just walk into a humidor and pick right. out a cigar. I mean, for those of us that have had the um, pleasure and opportunity to visit a factory, we, I think, have a little bit more appreciation for that cigar that we smoke because we've seen firsthand what goes into it. Mm -hmm. But um, our group of De Maestros um, is uh, eight, eight of them, Travis, from both factories? I want to, yes. And between them, they've got the most years of experience uh, than any other cigar company in the world. Um, in fact, our Tabacalera Garcia factory in the DR is the largest factory in the world for premium cigars. And um, the knowledge that they have and the experience, um, it's like someone being a, a sommelier for wine. I mean, there's no yeah. replacing experience at all. Uh, I, I couldn't get 100% like a master sommelier. You think a master sommelier, they've got to go through the experience where they can taste a wine and they know exactly who the farmer was, what day of the week it was uh, harvested, who did the pressing, who didn't clean their shoes that day. I mean, they've got to, they've got to know all this stuff, right? Our, our group of demi icers, our master blenders are on that level. They can look at a, a tobacco and they can say, oh, it's this, and it was probably this year, this many years old, by the way, it's the, it started to decompose. Here's how much fermentation it probably had. Um, and they know how to blend it. And that's why I think we've been very successful with some of the brands we're doing right now. Well, I think it's funny because a lot of times you'll hear about different companies that will, you know, they've got, you know, one master blender, you know, or, or they've got one or two guys and, and you guys right. have eight. Right, right. Like, like right. Combined experience. What was the combined experience? Because I remember reading the card. It was it was something astronomical for years combined. Yeah, I, I don't know off the top. Like Travis, do you know? Over 150 yeah. or 200, yeah. I think now. I think it's 200. Yeah. We just we just promoted a uh, one guy who's been with us for 18 years, and he went through our our uh, master program that we have in the factory because we actually nominate, we let the, the workers in the factory nominate two people to go through the master's program, which they are going to be trained to become a master's uh, of, of in our industry. So by doing that, we had one that just graduated up. And so now we're over 200 years experience playing with tobacco within the industry. That's fantastic. That's very, very it's fun. Cool. Yeah. They had a, uh, a photograph, a, a big, uh, enlarged prints on the back of our booth two years ago and I looked at it and I'm like I'm gonna take a picture of that so I did and downloaded it to my iBooks which I have all my presenters uh, on when I go to you know stores like yours and every time I talked about our group of the maestros creating something like uh, two summers ago our uh, H. Altman Connecticut shade um, wrapper by the Grupos I bring that picture on, I said this is who I mean when I'm talking about our group of the maestros and it kind of resonates better when somebody can visualize seeing that versus just hearing about them. Oh, 100%, especially to a retailer. I mean, you know, as, as you guys know, we're, we're really information driven as a company. We want to know right. as much as humanly possible. Right. And to also not only just for us, but to articulate it to the consumers to really get an understanding of why a cigar is what it is, especially something so special like that. That is limited. 
and what extra goes into why this cigar is what this is. And then, you know, to kind of give them a more of a preface of what the experience, you know, can be to them. Because it's it, like, like Travis was saying earlier, you know, we could tell anybody what a cigar, in our opinion, tastes like, what mm -hmm. the strength of it is, what the intensity of it is, what the burn is like. It's really almost like meeting a new person every time you light up a different cigar. You know, they have their own personality in a lot of different ways, and a lot of different characteristics. It's kind of a good approach to it. Um, so that information to us is very invaluable, not only as a selling tool, but just to continue on the, uh, the, the industry as a whole. The, on the yeah, and to your point, Cole, uh, there's a story behind every cigar. Um, sure. Just like there's a story behind uh, most vineyards with the wine that's made. Um, and when I can tell you guys as the retailers and the buyers that story, you guys can then tell that same story to your consumers as they're smoking the cigar or if you're recommending a cigar. And if people, who doesn't love a good story you know, right. be, behind something that you're loving? Yeah. 100%. Stories are very, very important for... Um, you know, not only just the selling of the cigar, but the enjoyment of the cigar. Right. You know? Right. Um, you know, I, I, and just to switch gears real quick to talk about one of your, like you said, one of the most iconic brands, uh, the Monte Cristo, which was when I first started smoking cigars, this is back in the late nineties, um, basically was the, the classic, the Monte Cristo classic was my cigar, right? Hmm. And, and I, I still remember those cigars with the brown label and everything. Absolutely just fell in love. I mean, that was one of the cigars that really made me fall in love with the whole process, et cetera. Um, talk to us just a little bit about Monte Cristo. There's been so much that you guys have been doing with that brand lately. You know, everything from the, the vintage Connecticut up to um, uh, coming up with the, the Nicaraguan. Um, one of my favorites, the Espada that came out. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, well, I'd like to take the first half of this question and let Travis take the second half. And um, the first half to me is, to your point, Rick, there's, that's a great starting point. The, on, the only better starting point that I always love when I talk to, especially young cigar smokers, when I'm helping them in the humidor, picking something out, I always ask, and it never fails. I say, how'd you start smoking cigars? Who, who turned you on the cigars? That's usually their, their father or their uncle or their grandfather. And it, sometimes they say, yeah, my first cigar was a Cuban. It's like, where do you go from there? Mm -hmm. But the Monte Cristo Classic with the brown band, that's a great, great jumping point for your very first cigar. I can see that would get you hooked. Yeah. But that's what we've been known as as a company for many, many years from the feedback that I get from consumers is you guys make really good cigars over the years, but it's also mild. You know, in the Monte Cristo line, the Classic and then the Monte Cristo White are both really good cigars, but they're more on the mild, mild plus side. And then that changed a few years ago, and this is where I'll let Travis jump in and tell you how that story changed. Well, we, when it comes to Monte Cristo, we knew we were segmented into, um, we knew we were kind of segmented in that, in that mellow market. So we needed to step out and by, by working with manufacturers like Placencia, and working with, uh, uh, let's see, with Placencia, A.J. Fernandez, working with guys that also have a respect and a love for the cigar like we do, we started building cigars that were medium, medium full, fuller bodied. Uh, you had mentioned the Espada and that, you know, working with Placencia on that one. One of my go-tos regularly, and I know they have a Robusto, which is more like a Corona. To me, it's, it's a, now it's like a Corona by today's standards. Right. Um, but it is a Robusto size. It, 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 I, it's, it's a cigar that I go to regularly called the Espada Oscuro. Mm -hmm. And it's using a San Andreas, uh, Maduro, real Maduro wrapper out of Mexico. And it was a wrapper that, that they had found, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Nicaragua. It was it's a, a wrapper that was put down when we first built the first Espada, knowing we were going to go to the Maduro later. So they found this Nicaraguan tobacco that, that Placentia had grown he felt, saw a lot of potential with it and he put it down. So uh, I, I, to me, it, it's just got great flavor. It's one that I'll fire up first thing in the morning when I'm still trying to wake up. Now that I'm home all the time, my commute to work is now walking the dog. I take a longer walk around the block. You know, I just say, you got to go twice. I got two bags, dog. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> um, but um, it's traffic now. You know, it, it, it's like getting bumper to bumper. Well, I got to stop and clean up. But <laughs> 
Um, but the, the, the Monte Cristos have really started to escalate. And we, we like, like I said uh, toward the beginning when we first started doing this, is we're listening to you guys, the retailers, the consumers. We have Mr. Rafael Nadal, who's been in the industry as, as a love and a passion for cigars. Is, it goes deeper than mine. And I've got a, a true love for it. Most people know this. But yeah, having somebody like that, working with the people, he's out with everybody every day. He's on social media. He's, he's everywhere. Um, but then our guys with internal, we started listening to the retails. We started listening to consumers and building Monte Cristos um, growing up. You'd mentioned the Monte Cristo Vintage Connecticut. I think most of us all have all smoked the Monte Cristo White Label. That, that's a, one of the staples beyond the, the, the classic, the brown label that you'd mentioned, the, the classic line. You, most people have smoked, if you say white label, they're going to go, oh, yeah, I've smoked that one. Um, but the Monte Cristo White Vintage Connecticut was just taking something we had. Let's tweak it by adding a little bit of Peruvian into it and then adding a Connecticut grown in the U.S. as opposed to Ecuador and see and it just, it, it's really, I think you guys would agree, it changed the flavor immensely. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. just gave a new character to it. Yeah, and it's not even as mild as the, the, uh, the predecessor, the white label either. It has a little bit more, just a little bit more on it. Yeah, a little it's spice from the Peruvian. Peruvian as well. okay, yeah, but yeah. it's it gave a different flavor profile, I guess, is probably the best way to put it. Yeah. Yeah, the um, the original Monte Cristo Espada was our first uh, entry into a Nicaraguan for Monte Cristo. It's a Puro. That was a collaboration with the Placencia family. And it was a home run. It got a lot of top ratings from a, a variety of different publications. And still one of my go-to cigars, as Travis mentioned, it was one of his too. Yeah. But, uh, and then uh, Cole mentioned another one of our favorites, uh, the Monte Cristo Epic. Mm -hmm. And we piggybacked off that a year or two after that was out and we came up with the Epic Craft Cured. And yeah. that's another uh, Placencia uh, collaboration. Um, and if you want to see a beautiful wrapper, look at that one. It's using a 2006 Rosado. Mm -hmm. you, you won't, and once you pull it out the cello, you won't find a more beautiful wrapper. It's just gorgeous. On the Craft Cured or the original Epic? Craft Cured. The epic Craft, craft Cured. Yeah. yeah, that's got some that's got some uh, hardiness to it. That's got some beef to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the limited epic number two was phenomenal too. Yeah, yep, in the Cuban style book. number two. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's good. You mentioned also earlier. You talked a little bit about we were talking about Romeo. Uh, we we saw Travis one of the, the the cigars that you had. So tell us a little bit about this guy because we don't no, have much shells. Not yet. We, we're actually not shipping these until the end of this month, first of next month, yep. depending on, on the COVID and how quickly we can get in. Sure. We don't like to ship anything on a new release until we have everything available. The it, it, worst thing in the world would be you guys order everything and we don't have the Toro in. We don't know when it's going to come in. So you, you get the other ones up on the shelf and you don't hold the space. And now you right. got to get the third one in. Something's going to fall off and we want you to have all, all up on the shelf. It's all about real estate in, in, in the cigar business, as most people are uh, in the retail sector. But the, the, this is a Nicaraguan Puro uh, coming off of the Romeo Reserva Real, uh, sure. kind of like the white label for Monte, or for Monte Cristo. The Romeo Reserva Real is one that I guarantee most everybody has smoked. Uh, the yeah. numbers that we push through on those are months. Great cigar. But yeah. we put a lot of time and effort in, in making sure that they're all equal in, in quality. We kind of wanted to tell that story, though. You know, if you, when you think about Reserver, the Romeo Reserva Real, you think about that love story, that creaminess, that nice, complex flavor profile, but not intrusive, the way it comes across. And we wanted to do that, but do it in a Nicaraguan Puro. So there again, Rafael Nodal and uh, AJ Fernandez, who have become really close friends, they got together and they, they worked on the new one. It's the Reserva Real Nicaragua. And I find it's a solid medium body. It's got uh, nice cocoa notes, a little bit of an earthy tone to it. Um, I get sweetness on the, on the end of my tongue when I first put it in my mouth. So it's got a, a little sweetness on the wrapper. And, of course, it's got the Nicaraguan little spice, but it goes away pretty quick, which tells me it's probably some Condega and Jalapa that's in there, but I don't know for a fact because they sure. didn't involve me in making this one. But we should be releasing these, I, I would say, the end of this month, 
probably the first week of, of uh, next month. Yep. I don't even know what month it is because we don't know if it's going to work anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> but just in prime time for, for Minnesota cigar smoking season. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, you light up a fire, you're going to be cool at night, but boy, it's, it's – trust me, my Colorado days remind me of that. I think I was the only one in the neighborhood that had a – I built a beautiful basement, and then my wife said, you can't smoke in the house. <laughs> I, You know – I, I'm not going to deny her that it was getting upstairs. So Travis, you're talking I, about real world <laughs> problems that are happening all across the United States right now where guys are at home going, oh, crap, I can't have a cigar. I can't smoke a yeah. cigar right now. You know? Ooh, I got a secret for them. If you What's want. That? Most of us all have a tool shed sitting out in the side yard. I just took my tool shed and I slowly moved the tools into the garage tucked them away. My wife didn't even notice they were there. And it kind of became part of the, the wall, the, you know, the wall. It just yeah. seemed normal and insulation, drywall, spray foam from the underneath, you know, so the, the spray foam underneath the, the, this little yeah. 10 by 10 shed. Oh yeah. I had electric. I had, a, uh, <laughs> it was, I had a chandelier for a light. I had an easy, a lazy boy in there. Oh my God. It was, it was, after I was supper, gonna say, is that where you're shooting from right now? That's like the most impressive <laughs> thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. And it was, it, honey, what's the insulation for? It's something I got coming up. And then hopefully, she, I, I know she knew, but in my mind, she forgot about it and I got away with something. But that's how I got away with it. I just built the shed and drywalled it and insulated it, put an electric fan in it, that's little right. fan in the, in the ceiling. <laughs> it's still, it's. Go ahead, go ahead, Scott. I was just going to say, it's still easier to hide a new uh, driver, golf driver, in your golf bag in the garage than that. But I like your story, Travis. Guys are the same way with guns. Uh, that's good. Where, how am I going to hide this gun that I just purchased? You know, I'm going to hide this box of cigars I just purchased, you know. Um, Travis, uh, as we start to wrap up here, I got to ask, because it was one of my all-time favorites, and I thought it was some of the coolest packaging, and it's not available right now. But I know with all the predicate stuff and everything like that that's out there, is there any chance that we see oh, here we go. The, the Monte Cristo De La Croix uh, from mm. way back in the day? You remember those with the painting and everything like that? Yep. The artwork in, in the city. In, in Connecticut, in the, in the farm, there were some of those pictures, actual pictures up framed on the wall. Because yeah, I remember, oh my gosh, I, I remember that cigar. I, I, I actually still have a couple of them in the tubes that I still have. And um, just as a side note, I remember smoking one, uh, it would have been maybe about five or six years ago, taking one out of the tube, hadn't been touched, it was sitting in my humidor and smoking it. And I would say it was in the top five greatest cigars I've ever smoked in my life. What that age did with that cigar over the long mm -hmm. term in that tube was phenomenal. And any, any hope at all? Do I have any hope at all seeing that again? I, I question. won't say no. I won't say yes. I will say let's just keep a keep an eye out. Let, let's. I'm going to call that a victory then. I'm going to I'm going to say that's a victory. <laughs> so you mean I got a chance? <laughs> <laughs> and my request for that cigar that Scotty knows full and well when we talked about the platinum line when they took to, when they took away my favorite size, the mini bellicoso in a tube. I knew you're going to say that short bellicoso. I smoked. Yeah. So many of those I'm, from the age of 18 oh, to 24. You were wanting the, did you say the uh, Tiamo World Selection Dominican? <laughs> that the uh, cigar you just said, the short Bellicosa? Okay. No. I'll, I'll, I'll try and get you one of those if I can. <laughs> so they're still available, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I know a guy. I, know I remember. Guy. I remember those. I remember those De La Croix minute. Those these Monte Cristo platinums and the mini bellicose and the tubes. Man, I yeah. love a lot of those. God, I love that. Cigar. What was the, what was the other one? Real quick before we go, Scott. It, they came in the cabinet, and they all had. And it was across. You had Trinidad. You had yeah. um, Monte Cristo, et cetera. And they all had. Oh, yeah. The, uh, they all came in the box. It was a cat. Was a cabinet selection. Was that cabinet what selection? Yep. Yeah. All the yep, bands were similar, right? Yeah, they all had yeah. that little bit of gold to them. Those yeah, that's you. We're talking over ten years ago, boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hey, you guys, have, you've been around for eighteen years. The company's been yeah. around for even longer. You guys have We've had seen a lot. Months. Yep. Yep. Who remembers the Trinidad originals? Oh God. In the gold and the and the black. Yep. You had, you had the Maduro and the natural. 
Yep. Great. Song. That was a great day. Oh yeah. Yep. I told it, through a lot of those too. Wow. Tell us about speaking of the new uh, Trinidad. But tell us about the I, new one that we smoked at the farm. Yeah, the Espiritu. Yeah. That was great too. Oh, the Espiritu. That was, yeah, that's another yeah. AJ Fernandez collaboration. Yep. I smoked that, that on the uh, podcast we did, uh, Cigars from Afar, with Boveda. With uh, Boveda Rob, I smoked that one. It was spectacular. Absolutely. Yeah, spectacular. A lot, very flavorful. A lot of body. Mm -hmm. you, have you smoked the Fundador yet? Which have one? you smoked the the Fundador size in Trinidad Espiritu? No. Oh. The the Lantero? No. That's no, a, no, that's, that's a, really uh, stupidly good. That's an event uh, cigar only, but I bet you Travis might be able to find a few is what he's saying. Well, we just might have to throw an event just for that. Yeah. Tra Travis, these guys turned me on to Coronas about, oh, six, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. I was always a Toro Robusto guy, basically Toro or Bellicoso. Yeah. And I'll, I tell the story often in my uh, territory. These guys, along with the owner, Jeff, turned me on into a co big Corona fan to this day. Corona? So, yeah. Yeah. Love the Coronas. Love the it Coronas. Was, it was funny because Scott's like, why do you like this size? I'm like, dude, I want like intense flavor to it. But it's just, you know, the intensity of it. It's a different thing. Oh, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. it's a different way to make a cigar. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's because I remember that's all you had for samples when you brought stuff in was Toro. <laughs> yeah. Well, yep. I, I put together a program and I, this is a, a, something that I, it's taken me well over two years to put together. A uh, lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of love went into building something like this. But you guys have probably seen, and, and, and your viewers cross country, have probably seen other manufacturers that have come in and you get to smoke these little tiny cigars. They're a little bit of the filler leaf. You know, like each filler yeah. leaf you smoke separately. And then you smoke the binder leaf. And then you're like, here's the wrapper. Now, you know, light them all up and smoke them all together. And that's this cigar. Well, yeah. When you think about it, what are you doing with those little samplers? I, I started thinking about this. I'm like, you know, it doesn't come down to this is this, this, this. Because where does the flavor come from? Wrapper, wrapper binder, filler. Right. Well, it all comes from the wrapper. The wrapper is where 60 to 80% of your flavor comes from. The filler is where you get your body level. And it's also where you get the balance in the, in the cigar to really give it that flavor to give it proper balance out of it. So by doing that and saying, you know, and I started thinking, well, how does somebody know what their favorite wrapper might be? Program I put together called Know Your Wrapper. You're going to see this coming out here this fall. There you go. That's cool. Yeah. Tell us about this so they can see yeah. it. Because you had well, that you, house at the farm when we were there. Yeah, if, you, if you, you're able to see it, you got like a Connecticut shade. Mm-hmm. I smoke this one first. You only smoke them, and my suggestion is you only smoke them for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half hour at, at most. But if you notice the size, right? They're they're just a longer Corona. They're they're uh, 38 by six and five eight or six and a sixteenth. And you know from there, then you'd go on to the Cameroon. Actually, smoke a Cameroon. Now these cigars are built with 100% that leaf, so sure. you're tasting just the wrapper. Is it the flavor that's hitting your palate? Because all of our palates are set up differently. You know, you, there are foods that you like that I don't and, and vice versa. So right. you need to find out what your favorite wrapper is and, and are you being true to yourself? So you're going to go through like the U.S. Uh, um, U.S. Connecticut and the Cameroon, then the Ecuadorian Connecticut, the Criollo, the Habano leaf, because Habano is being is used in a lot of products right now, right. along with Sumatra. We do a lot with Sumatra now too. And then to, to round it out, guys, you've been on the tour. What, what wrapper we used on the last one? The Connecticut Broadleaf. Yep. So we, you get to kind of experience all different styles of tobacco. And, and there's also a booklet that I put in there that kind of describes about each of the uh, each leaf that you're going to smoke. Got a note section. You'll be able to take notes. So, like, be honest with yourself. You smoke it and say, oh, I like this, but I didn't like so much this one. And then once you find out that, hey, you know, it, it, that Helbano leaf, or like for me, it was kind of an uh, eye opener on the first one that I did was Sumatra. Well, I can look at this sheet and go, okay, what brands utilize Sumatra? Oh, it's the AG Room Quattro Original, you know, the, the Hispaniola the Jose, the, by Jose Mendez, the Anniversario. Certain leaves, I can now look and see what cigars that we make. 
as a consumer can and go, oh, these might be in my wheelhouse. That's cool. By telling me what you like, you're more of a Habano guy. Right. right? That's great. What so, Rick, you're, you're a Habano guy, right? That would be my guess on you, Rick, is, is you're a Habano guy. Cole, I, I don't know about you. you it, you're all over the board. I am all over the board. You're everywhere. <laughs> you know what I'm smoking right now, believe it or not? I'm smoking that Fazino, old Monte Cristo limited edition. The original wow. Fazino from the Super Bowl. You're smoking wow. a Fazino? Holy wow. cow. I wow. had to. This yeah. is a special company we're in here. I had to. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. I had to. And I know what? It smokes even better than the first time I smoked it when it was brand new. Oh. This thing is just amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing. Guys. Still got him around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cole's got a little bit of everything somewhere stashed away, right? Um, well, listen, I, I, I want to thank you guys for, for joining us. Thank you to Scott. Thank you to Travis for taking the time to, to sit and talk with us about cigars. Uh, on our very little impromptu show that we're doing. Um, we had a blast learning a little bit more about the company Altidus, learning about the brands that some, some of the brands, because the portfolio is massive uh, right. that, that you guys have, et cetera. And, uh, and, I, and I hope the, the customers that are watching this got just as much out of this because it was great. So thank you very yeah. much. And thank you again, guys, for having us at, out in uh, Connecticut and you know, expanding our knowledge on, on even more stuff. You never stop learning in this industry or anywhere else. So. Yeah, and Travis, keep, keep, keep doing that. I, I love yeah. the emphasis that the company is putting on the, the knowledge, et cetera, and, and getting that out to people. I think that that's invaluable. Um, we've always said that the best cu customers, consumers, are the ones that have the knowledge and, and know what they're smoking and understand it better. So keep doing well, that. Well, on that note, on the Connecticut tour, when you guys came out, we do that more for our, our retail to, to build partnerships on the retail level. But I'm, I've convinced the powers that be to let me do something a little different. I want to bring consumers out this year. Bar, you know, if everything can go as planned, we are looking to bring out um, consumers for two different days, on a Friday and a Saturday. Uh, come out, you, you get to go through basically the whole farm. Kind of like what you guys did, except we aren't going to get on those little buses and go from like area to area, depending on where we're harvesting. I'm going to have it all set up to where you can see all stages and everything going on. Um, but in the event it does happen, I invite you to go on to uh, uh, Instagram, go on to Facebook. Nice. That's where, that is where we'll be posting uh, that. And, uh, I didn't put it on this sheet, but Monte Cristo social club. If you haven't signed up to be a Monte Cristo social club member, we will probably post it to there first. And then Sagat real quick. If you guys got two minutes. Yeah. Maybe you can, Scott can give you a teaser about his trip to the premier Honduran factory tour, which uh, just took place about three weeks ago, four weeks ago. I know the name of it, but go ahead, Scotty. Yeah, that, that was a blast. Um, and it was funny. And I, and I told you, Rick and Cole, when I saw you, that I ran into Jeff in the airport that morning as I was departing yeah. for Honduras. And he was heading to Nicaragua. Two two white guys from Minnesota going to different parts of the world on the same day was kind of uh, surreal. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I hadn't been to a factory in a while. This is the very first trip for any group to our Honduras factory. And I'll tell you what, they treat you like family, as you guys know, with your different factory trips. And um, there's nothing like being out in a tobacco field. I mean, no. up here in the Midwest, we see a lot of cornfields and that so kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, but tobacco field is pretty, pretty neat, really neat. And we have a new uh, cigar coming out uh, from H. Upman uh, in Yeho that uh, was created uh, in Honduras with our newest uh, group of the Maestros, as uh, Travis was allu alluding to earlier. Sure. And what was the name of the uh, factory for a lot of people that don't know? Flor de Copan. In Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. What is that? About a, a, a three hour, five beer shuttle ride? <laughs> three and a half hour, <laughs> five beer, one pee stop. <laughs> and, and you can smoke cigars on the shuttle. So it's not all bad. But uh, I'll tell you what, you don't want to look uh, at traffic coming at you. Let's just say that. Isn't that great? You go, you go to some of these other countries, you get right on the bus, and it's like, here's yeah. your cigar, here's your beer, 
sit yeah. down and relax, you know? Yeah. It's so oh different God. than what we have here. Well, Scott, how many, how many hats did you bring to Honduras? <laughs> hats? <laughs> just, well, just one. Just one. Dude. Only one? Yeah, they're hard to travel I'm almost with. disappointed in that answer. <laughs> I don't but I have I, I have several. I have several. <laughs> we do. We gave you a nickname accordingly. <laughs> oh, I'm almost afraid to ask. Uh, that's all right. Uh, Rick, would you like to elaborate? No, no. We, we've always referred to Scott as we, we call him like Mimsy. And, and the reason is you ever watch the old Looney Tunes? Bugsy. Yeah, the, the old Looney Tunes shows where they got the, the gangster and he always wears that hat that goes real short guy, yeah. And then they got the big dumb guy next to him with the little guy with the gun and the, 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 the and all Tommy gun. Talking. That's Scott. Bugsy. That's Scott. That's Scotty. That's yeah. you. Got it. Got it. it. Got it. Got it. <laughs> I you see guys. it. I yeah, really yeah. Oh, yeah. appreciate you guys taking the time to, to sit with yeah. us. So thank you again. Um, thank you guys. Great work. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys again, hopefully in person when You're this right. is all over shortly. So awesome. yeah, we, we thank you very much for letting us come on and, and spend an, an hour with you, you and your, your followers. Cause I know you've got a lot and it means a lot to us, but guys, please be safe. And until next time, I look forward to sitting back and having a cigar with you. And anytime I can, let reach out. Let's, let's have another one of these where we can just powwow a little more. Yeah. Uh, we've got a lot going on, and, and there's a lot more that I'd like to find out more about uh, Scott on his personal level. That <laughs> well, that's a whole different that. se- that, That's a two-part <laughs> segment in the future. You're uh, breaking up. The good news is, though, I still, me and Rick, I, don't know, I can't speak for Rick, but I know I still have those that jar of seeds, man, and that's what I'm going to be doing in my corner. Oh, yeah. See if I can grow some, uh, some tobacco. Well, if you're going to do it this year, you better get them started right now. Yep. Well, I got nothing but time. You believe me. You know, it's still kind of I know fun. your growing cycle is a lot shorter than it is down in Florida or Dominican. So. Oh, I can imagine. Have fun with it, guys. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, Cole. Absolutely. Appreciate you guys. Take, right, care, take guys. care, guys. We'll see you soon. Thanks again. You bet. All right. Bye.